Back to reality. I love that show. It's very hip to be on the show. Best show since no other show. Happy Tuesday. I love you guys. You are hilarious. It's Tuesday. It's only Tuesday. I absolutely love you. You're thoroughly entertaining. I'm very excited. It's Tuesday. Now the Tuesday. I am not a morning person. Wake me at 10. Come on. It's showtime. Hi, everybody, and welcome to NSS. This is the Reynolds Report. February was another heartbreaker for the $65 billion television ad business. Commercial ratings cratered across broadcast and cable networks, marking the fifth straight month of double-digit declines for the industry. Overall, primetime broadcast network ratings were off 12% last month compared to a year ago, while cable networks dropped 11%. So what's going on? Why are people dumping broadcast and cable TV? Because we're increasingly watching Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Streaming, and other services. About 40% of households now have subscription video service, and those same services are currently competing for content. Yahoo, Amazon, and Hulu are among the bidders for the streaming rights to Seinfeld, with the winner expected to pay at least $500,000 per episode. No word yet if Vandalay Industries is in on the bidding. We hear it every year, March Madness costs employers over $1 billion in lost productivity. But is this actually true? Probably not. Most time management experts agree the average worker wastes roughly the same time every day on non-work activities. So if March Madness games weren't going on, we'd be wasting that time on Facebook or watching cat videos or taking longer lunches. Basically, when there's downtime or the boss isn't around, we often fill our time with non-work stuff. This time of year, it's stuff related to college basketball. And the 68 teams for the NCAA Men's College Basketball Tournament are set to go. The general consensus is Kentucky will win. Unless, in the last two minutes of the championship game, they're coached by Pete Carroll. The heavily anticipated live-action Cinderella opened over the weekend. Everyone went to see this thing, which probably explains the whereabouts of Vladimir Putin. A mobile meth lab was found in the restroom of a Walmart in Indiana. And in the garden shop, they discovered that those weren't tomato plants. The vice president of Sierra Leone is fearing for his life and requesting asylum in the United States. According to protocol, his American counterpart, Vice President Joe Biden, is now obligated to find a room in his basement. Kim Kardashian has vehemently denied rumors of a divorce with Kanye West. Of course, in Kimmy's defense, she has no idea what the word vehemently means. Scientists have discovered a black hole that is 12 billion times the size of our sun. Apparently, it's full of Hillary Clinton emails. The Pope shocked everyone on the weekend by saying that he will have a short reign, possibly of only a few years in office. And then, of course, he plans to test the highly lucrative free agency market. In India, on the day of her wedding, a bride called off the wedding when her groom was unable to answer a simple math question. The only thing that makes a man more nervous than getting married is getting married on the same day as a pop quiz. And a 54-year-old Texas guy entered the Guinness World Book of Records when he completed 4,321 pull-ups in 24 hours. He now owns the pull-up record as well as the record for the world's longest arms. Thanks, everybody. We have a new episode of the Reynolds Report for you every weekday. Check out the Being Frank Show starring Frank D'Angelo live Tuesdays and Thursdays at 3 p.m. Eastern right here on NSS.